Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Lily Tang Williams. I'm a Chinese immigrant born and grew up during the Mao's Cultural Revolution. I'm here to tell you two days ago, I published a opinion piece by the largest newspaper in New Hampshire, Union Leader. I put a link on my um, YouTube channel here so you can read in details. The title is called A Chinese Immigrant Warning on Critical Race Theory. If you don't know much about Cultural Revolution, which was a banned word in Chinese internet. It was 10 years social political chaos. A campaign started by Chiang Mai Mao, the supreme leader in China, who wanted to use Red Guards, a urban youth, to purge his political enemies inside of the party and outside the party. And this uh, campaign he used called getting rid of four olds, old Chinese culture, custom, ideas, and habits. So this uh, cultural revolution like no other revolution to against the regime. This is a cultural revolution used against its own society and uh, its own people. And I wanted to um, share with you when I was growing up, I just remember we were divided into 10 classes. Everybody in China belongs to one of those 10 classes, five red and five black. The five black classes are re county revolutionaries, define that, rightist, who is defined there. Of course, landowners, property owners, and the traders. Red classes, like my parents, workers, peasants, and the Communist Party officials, carters, and the revolutionary uh, murders, heroes, and their families. So in order to do the political struggle campaign, Mao shut down schools, and neither the urban youth to do political struck campaign full time. And then my uncle's generation, Red Guard generation, never even finished high school, never had a diploma. The struggling sessions that the Red classes, Red Guard used to make a black class people to be publicly shamed, to apologize for being black classes, and uh, to go through the very violent hostile struggle sessions where you must apologize, denounce yourself and denounce your families. Some children could not handle that. So they were pressured to come out to cut ties with their families to say, I'm gonna change my last name. And I hate my grandparents because they were landowners. So many sad stories happened during those 10 years period. Some live with their guilt today because they turn on their families and their families died because they told the government what their family did, what their family said, and they were tortured to death or went to re-educational camps. Very, very sad 10 years. Mao's Cultural Revolution was a top-down orchestra social justice movement. Estimated 20 million people died per the formal CP, actually CCP leader. So sad, they don't have a, a monument and they don't have even files on those people who died. And uh, you cannot even search and um, say Mao's Cultural Revolution on internet. Even Cultural Revolution today that uh, people still think, well, Mao was a great leader because there's no free press. People don't know what happened. My family members don't know the true truth about the mass famine where 20 million to 40 million people died of starvation under Mao. So in today, America, populist social justice movement or woke movement 
I see the shadow of Mao's Cultural Revolution in this ideology called critical race theory. This inspired the movement and followed by lots of youth and lots of people who don't know history. For those who are unfamiliar with critical race theory, it is an idea, ideology that claim America is a systemic racist country. American law, society, institutions are inherently racist. White people are born and racist because they culture domination by white and they control the economical and the political power at the expenses of people of color. I'm going to share my little bit story, personal story with you. After I left China for America at the age of 23, I come to America, arrived in Austin, Texas airport with nothing. I discovered Texas to be filled with the kindest and the most generous people I have ever encountered. Here I was, a stranger in a strange country and land, being invited into American homes and offered help, household items. And I even got a godmother in Austin, Texas, who actually played my mother's role and a godfather play my father's role at my American wedding because my family could never come. And now, 30 years later, 32 years later, I have been married to a Texan. My husband, John, we met the first night, raised three wonderful biracial children. And I'm self-employed, working from home, and living American dream. So my experience is not unique. As somebody who come here with yellow skin, a Chinese, non-white, non-English speaker, achieved American dream. How could you call America is a racist, systemic racist country when millions of immigrants coming here wanted to better their lives and live in American dreams? So while CRT, critical race theory, and the Marxism and Maoism are not really identical ideologies, but I want to remind you there are similarities I'm very concerned with. So the number one similarity that the development of the quasi-religious following of our zealous youth devoted to this kind of destruction of what is old to advance that which is new. Whereas Mao called for traditional Chinese culture to be destroyed. And the critical race theory called for dismantling system of oppression. So how do you define the old is subjective? How do you define oppressive is also subjective. And the second similarity, both movement are chaotic and violent, very destructive. And police were told in China that time not to enforce laws and not to stop the violence. And local government broke down. Everybody followed Mao and he became our God through that violent years of his cultural revolution. And he got rid of his political enemies, all right. And he went back to Beijing and uh, our actually president, Liu Shaoqi that time, was house arrested and later died like animal. Nobody cared. And today, when I hear the Marxist, the young people who follow those Marxists, trained Marxists calling for defund the police, can you draw the similarity there? So if the violence happened in the street, at the same time, we need to dismantle the police force, so who is going to protect the regular common folks who are at the risk of the violence? Another similarity is that both ideologies reduce problem 
complex problems to a simple two groups of people divided into oppressor group, which is white, according to critical race theory, and the oppressed group, which are people of color. And uh, that's subjective too. So who is gonna have authority to divide those people? I mean, can you buy into their definitions? Are they based on facts and data? I mean, it's like you have to judge yourself, right? It's like a media press and the politicians come all towards the narratives. And lots of people are just afraid to speak up. I mean, it's not every white is racist. There are individual racist cases. And we need to have a conversation about that. But, but no matter what you say, what you do, if people call you racist, then you are silenced. Now, how do you have a productive conversation about that? I think there are lots of people of color like me wanted to speak up because we see this is a semi, you know, feminine, especially immigrants like me say it's so familiar to what we already went through in the past. Another similarity is the process, the process in critical race theory training and the rituals they go through. It's a similar to the cultural revolution struggle sessions. You will write self-criticizing letters and you will evaluate how white you are, evaluate how black you are like in China. And, uh, and you're supposed to apologize for yourself, for your ancestors, for your history and public shaming, instilling, instill hatred and guilt into people's head. That does not sound like a, all men are pretty equal. We are all brothers and sisters, Americans who want to work together in peace. The next feature I say the similarity is that uh, they are teaching this in our schools to the children, to the students who are naive, who don't know much without parental consent. I was a red child because my mom, they were working class, but they wanted to teach us to hate black classes. So we were supposed to be oppressed classes. But then we did not get much food rationing coupons and we did not you know, get a special treatment. Actually, we were equally slaves, just like the black classes. But we're supposed to hate black classes because we're red classes. So it just sounds familiar to me. It doesn't matter which class you belong to, which group you belong to, the communist Marxist will come after you, after you all. That's why I wanted to remind Americans today, don't buy into those kind of rhetorics, narratives, Marxist talking points. Our young people don't know the history because they, you know, government schools do not teach them real history. They don't know what happened in China. They don't know how many millions people died under communism and they want to equity. Equity is a Marxist term. Do our children know that? And racial equity is what? It's the, another name for oppressed versus oppressors, Marxist ideology. Read the Communist Manifesto that you will recognize some of those terms. I've been in this country for a while. I thought that the spirit of American individualism would resist the silence of songs of Marxism, Maoism that I left behind. I was naive. It once again come back with a different name as it always does and now threaten to poison America, my refugee, my new country. So I'm very worried. I want you to fight back. I do want to tell you, if you are silenced, you're afraid, I understand. You're afraid to be called a racist. You're afraid to lose your jobs. But if you don't speak up, especially people who know this, 
It's not true. You are afraid, but、uh, it will not matter near the end. They will come after all of us. So it's time to take this warning from a Chinese immigrant. Fight back! I'm calling you to support our rally. If you live in New Hampshire, in Massachusetts, Vermont, New England states, come to our rally this coming Saturday, April twenty fourth, at the State House Capitol in Concord, from one p.m. to two thirty p.m. We need to show up. We need to stop the critical race theory indoctrination. If we don't, we are going to lose America. And when majority people are silenced and quiet, why are you lose your country? Then what happened to me will happen to you. Look at today's Chinese; they are enslaved by their one-party government, and they are trapped twenty-four hours a day. It's coming. It's happening in America. So fight back. Speak up or be a whistleblower. Whatever is happening in your schools, in your at your work, private corporations, government agencies, colleges, do something to save our country. So please share, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your help and your time. Have a good night.